Okay, hi friends, um, and this is Santiago here, and I'm in one of the camps that is being prepared. Uh, the owner is a precious sister in the Lord from Holland, a Dutch, and we're not going to record her or her name, but uh, I want you to listen to her testimony uh, very briefly, so you be motivated and pray for her, and we need to help her to get this place ready for the difficult times that are coming ahead. So, dear sister, thank you so much for, for having me in your place and for sharing your testimony. We want to record just a brief part of it. And I understand you were born in in Holland, right? In, yes, I was born in, um, in Holland in 1941. That's just at the beginning of the war. And um, it ended in 1945. And during that time, uh, my family was involved in uh, hiding the Jewish people because they were uh, they were being uh, just taken away. They were our neighbors, and they were just being taken away. And the little children would be left. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so you you uh, you were a baby when uh, you grew up in in, in Nazi um, uh, occupied. Uh, Holland was occupied by the Nazis when you were born. That's correct. And okay, so I just want to take this mic so you can talk better. Okay. And so what motivated you to come to America and now to have this vision? How long had you had this vision to prepare a place of refuge for the Jewish friends as they needed in the coming days? Uh, my parents um, loved the Jewish people. And um, they really worked hard to keep them alive in Holland. And uh, that is my heritage. And I still feel that that is my heritage to uh, love the Jewish people and keep them safe if we should have difficult times ahead. Okay, thank you. What would you say to the American brethren? Well, in, in Holland, um, the difficulties happened uh, in a very short time. In three years' time, uh, the cities were uh, devoid of food. People ate tulip bulbs, cats and dogs, and sorry to say each other after a while. It got desperate, and the, the, chil the growing children were uh, very, very sick, and uh, the parents couldn't stand to see them die, so they asked my father, who was a skipper, he had a boat, to take them up north to the farms so that they could uh, stay alive, because the farmers still had some supplies to, to feed people with. Okay. And, okay. Uh, um, also, um, you know, this can happen in America, and uh, so uh, it... it, it doesn't take but two or three years to for us to use up all our resources and then have nothing left so um, I would encourage everyone to ask of the Lord what their part is in uh, keeping not only their families alive but for the churches to be houses of refuge where they can uh, have food so I'm storing up food and have a water provision that um, will be good because the basic two things we need is food and water to yes. uh, stay alive so okay. um well may, may the grace of god be with you and, and abundantly as we prayed a little while ago so you can have the resources to have this place ready now if uh, if we have a need to bring um jewish people or brethren for that matter to this place of refuge how many people do you think you can right now allocate in this camp? Well, we can sleep 50 people on beds because we're also a retreat site for different churches that come here to have events. And um, so we have some resources to, uh, to have people come and uh, stay a while if necessary or stay however long the Lord needs them to stay. Thank you.
amor Un nuevo día empezó y ahora quiero andar en pos de ti Quiero volar y confiando en tus brazos Dentro de mí Esta pasión 